Hi there, YouTube family. I hope you're all having a lovely week so far. Just got started today. Uh, I wanted to go into today connecting the dots number two. Last one, if you missed the video, we discussed some insights as to what the union was, what you get from it, and things such as that. If you're confused with any of this video, go back to that video and hopefully it will explain what we're going to talk about today a little bit better. So we're going to get a little bit deeper, have a little bit of a deeper insight into the industry today. And I wanted to start with some bullet points of what we discussed in the last video, just to keep you on track where we discussed union, pension, health and welfare, what a demo contract is. I'm going to give you a little sample of that today and show you bas basically what the contracts look like and give you an example of a, a 35 piece orchestra that you may want to hire what that would look like. And then to talk about recording sessions and that a little bit along with the demo contracts. And then of course I want to go into non-union work and the fear of keeping it quiet. Um, basically I'm trying to bridge the gap between these, these two. So it doesn't exist anymore. And I'm reaching out to you to dive deeper into the conversation so we can all be on the same, the same page about it. Um, and then of course, with being a non-union worker, you don't receive benefits. So there's, there's that difficulty, right? And, and what do we do about that? Um, and then basically that's where we're going to go off today. So I want to first start obviously talking just about union members. And uh, again, we, as we know, it's, a, it's an organization of workers, uh, in the same skilled occupation or related skilled occupations, right? Who act together to secure for all members favorable wages, uh, hours and other working conditions. So you want everything to be fair for all professional workers. Uh, trade unions in the U S as the little man says <laughs> started early in the 19th century. So they have been around for, for quite some time. Now there are many benefits to being a union member as a professional. You have contract negotiations, which require both sides for approval, right? Labor and management. And you want basically them to listen and to reach a reasonable compromise that's acceptable for both sides. Uh, wages and benefits, of course, and working conditions are negotiated. So how much money you're going to make for those conditions are negotiated every time rather than it just being this way all the time, which maybe will, would be a little bit simpler for clients to want to hire Los Angeles musicians. Of course, one of the perks is wages, benefits, and working conditions are negotiated. So you're not in there trying to negotiate yourself. And if you're not satisfied, you can work for changes, of course, during the contract negotiations, but only during really the negotiations. Uh, neither labor nor management can make unilateral changes to a significant contract. Therefore, if modifications are necessary during the life of a contract, both sides must agree. There is also discipline, uh, which up to and including discharge is actually subject to a grievance procedure and binding arbitration, depending on the terms of your contract, of course. A union member is also allowed to attend any weekly board meetings to observe and to speak up and have their voice heard. I've been myself to quite a few board meetings and there was even a time I was working to become a board member myself. Unfortunately, there are some stipulations that didn't allow me to do so based on, I believe, misunderstanding an organization and miscommunication, unfortunately, which uh, is my goal to communicate to you all now. So we can all figure this out together. Then we discussed a little bit about pension, of course, which is a regular payment that is made during a person's retirement from an investment fund to which that person or their employer has contributed during their work life. And where we are with pension, as I mentioned, they're in this critical and declining status, yet they have reached some sort of conclusion where litigation is 
is now happening. So there are some links below. You see AJ's News Broke, which is in episode 38. This was actually from a couple of years ago, but it explains the labor union history for you a little bit and maybe gives you a better idea of that. And I will also include some links for the American Federation website and Musicians for Pension Security Fund, what their current status is. So you can look into it yourself rather than boring you with all of those details right now. Um, as well as we discussed health and welfare, of course, a health and welfare trust or a health and welfare plan, which is a tax-free vehicle for financing a corporation's health care cost for their employees. They were introduced back in 1986 by Canada Revenue Agency, also known as CRA. Now, the question is that we briefly discussed in my last video is where is musicians health and welfare and pension money going uh, is a question. Well, from my own knowledge of this, and if it if it's different on your end, please do let me know. I, I, I don't um, propose to be a perfect person. I'm just trying to make it better. <laughs> and so I'm trying to help you all understand it so we can make it better together. And from what I know, Union musicians do not currently have a say in where they want their hard earned money invested, right? There is just this, this pension fund that the money goes into. And apparently when you retire, you're supposed to see it. But with the current status, this is where we're at. We don't know. And it's a big question. So that's something that's a little bit unfortunate. We don't really get to choose where we want our, our money invested. The deficit of our pension health and welfare is facing must be addressed. As I know, they're working on it, but it is currently in a critical and declining status as it has been for several years. And I'm sure all of the legal fees that have gone into it um, aren't inexpensive. Again, from what I know, there are over 80% of the, I believe, 80,000 musicians that I, I was discussing in my last video of union musicians that do not qualify for the health benefits because 80% of those musicians make less that our union members make less than $800 per month. So they have a percentage of any union check they make and that money goes in to a trust fund. I will also include below my video AF of M health and welfare information links and the flex plan website. That is another form of, of retirement or money that's earned that goes into another fund. Okay, here we can see on this slide basically the website of the Local 47 and these are all of the different contracts that you can choose from. You see electronic media and contracts and if you notice up there, there is also a demo, a demo contract that is available. This is the demonstration recording contract that is only two pages long, so it's not you know, horribly, horribly long. However, there's rules and regulations you need to follow. Of course, there's a minimum call. You have to have your people show up at least a minimum of one hour. There's an overtime stipulation. Of course, they have to take breaks. There is an overdubbing stipulation that if you play and record everything more than once, then there's a 50% um, pay that is an overdub fee as well. And there's the base scale, which of course I talked about in my other video, the leader, the contractor, if the person is playing doubles, there's also a music preparation. And then we go into our health and welfare and pension contributions. As you notice, there's a cancellation stipulation, but a demo recording session. Now getting into this, just to break it down, this is a sample of a, a recording session that was done at the bridge in Glendale, California, before it switched over to uh, another studio whom Noah Gladstone now owns and runs, which is very exciting. I will put the link below for his his studio. He's a contractor in Los Angeles for the San Bernardino Symphony, as well as in production and all of these other amazing things, as well as a trombone player. A demo recording session is, say you have 35 musicians, that you would like to hire some musicians for. And it lasts for six hours long. Say you have a bunch of composers that have one, one piece that they're working on or something that they really want released and you work together, you have, this is, was specifically for student composers and there were 10 to 15 of them. 
The contract that was used was the demo collective bargaining agreement that again, I discussed in my last video. The musicians pay for all six hours of this recording session was $180 for each musician, which totaled yes. $6,300. There was also the contractor and leader fee that each received $270. Then there was the pension contributions that totaled $1,210.65. The health and welfare contributed was $756. So just adding those numbers up and thinking of, you know, the entire session breaking down, you, you basically have a pretty, pretty decent bill at the end with some stipulations, you know, within your session and what you do. But this is just to give you an example. This is a recording studio on the top right and the bottom is the booth where the sound engineer and composer oftentimes unless they're out conducting and many of and the mixers and the orchestrator and also oftentimes the contractor if they're not also playing on stage will sit in the booth and the recording session as you can see is very high tech it has all kinds of fancy gadgets in here to make it sound incredible in other words Okay, now we've discussed a lot in my last two videos about what a union worker is, the history of unions and everything such as that. Now I want to get into the other side of professional musicians' lifestyles, non-union workers. There are many of those. There are many Facebook sites right now, many opportunities for musicians to connect, and some people are union members and some are non-union. Now, a non-union worker clearly receives many less benefits to, you know, to a future of a performing artist, which is basically a company or, or an organization that does not employ workers who belong to a union or a person who does not belong to a union, which is non-union employers or employees. So as I mentioned yesterday, you have, you know, you make a certain amount of money in union work, but then you make all this other money in non-union work. And of course, you'd love for it all to be union, but you can't really say no to the work. If you're only making this much in union work, you can't say no to the non-union work. Um, and there's a little joke <laughs> on the bottom left. It basically says it's a non-union healthcare worker, she wants to know how to decide her pay. <laughs> and you could see the man with, you know, a bow and arrow, he's blindfolded, turned around backwards, and he kind of just chooses, oh, it's 6%, it's 5.25%. It's basically, there's, there's, you know, no protections to this, which is why the union has been around so long to help professional musicians. So essentially, if you're a non-union worker, you are in employment at will. Your employer can discipline or fire you at any time for any reason, and you have no recourse. Uh, it's an open door policy, right? So the employer will listen to you and then do whatever he or she wants to do. The employer determines wages, benefits, and other terms and conditions of work. If you're not satisfied with your job, it's really your option <laughs> only to get another job, basically. Wages, benefits, and other terms and conditions can be changed at, at any time by the employer. Hiring and promotion is up to the discretion of the employer. The employees don't really get a say in the matter. Freelance musicians have many and several employers. So you can only imagine at the end of the year how tax season goes for freelance musicians whom are both in the union and, and do non-union work. Um, oftentimes there's no contract that's given for, you know, to protect the musicians. Again, no real protection or benefits. And there's no public record of your playing or your work. So it's not really recognized. You don't get the credits. Like if you see in a movie, actually there's a couple of incredible composers that have been working to get the credits added uh, for the musicians and Michael Giacchino is one of them hats off to him who has who has done so and it's a really incredible you know feeling to be included in the making of a movie especially when you add the, the you know the mood <laughs> and the feeling and all of that to to the movie so it's really great when musicians can be credited for their work now that we've talked about all of 
these interesting topics, I wanted to offer some solutions and possible ideas that I have had personally in my business, offer them to the world and see if you have other ideas that may help fix our industry. Um, basically, if pension, health and welfare contributions are being reduced over time due to not enough union work, <laughs> What are some solutions to signify those numbers and change those numbers to increase over time? Huh. I have thought about this a lot and all of the different pension and health and welfare. Of course, we want retirement. And of course, we would love to get those health benefits. Perhaps if all pension, health and welfare due percentages could be reduced to a flat 5%, that seems like it would make a bit of sense. It's about cut about in half, give or take a little bit more. Um, but it could have an even ground for all employers. So it's an expected, you know, rate they have to pay, but it's only a total of 10% for their entire, um, their entire budget. I would like to propose and establish grant writing staff. Uh, uh, basically the staff would come in two to three months out of the year and apply for every feasible grant the union can apply for, possibly apply for. And us as members possibly would have recommendations of grants that could be applied for, but we'd have an actual grant writing staff that does that and represents that for us, right? Now, I also would propose reducing the membership fees into four separate categories. I think that youth under age, under the age of 21, uh, I don't think they should have any fees for becoming union members. I think it should just be on, uh, based on donations. So if a youth is under 21, perhaps their parent or family member may have, you know, a donation that they could offer every year to, to become a member and, you know, to, to reap their, the benefits from the classes and the seminars and whatnot. Also, I, I believe that uh, there should be a, an adult low income option. So basically, there's an annual percentage of what union money you made that year. That every, so it's added every month and then you pay, you know, a percentage of what all of that money was, um, for your, for your dues and whatnot. There should also be, I believe, an adult premium option for membership, which is an active member making the minimum per month, every month, and are recording for film and television. They're not really just getting started and their, you know, their pension and health and welfare is, is in a, in a hopeful, decent situation. And then the fourth, for an adult inactive that no longer are in the union and just want to hear what's going on or support us, I don't believe there should be any fees incurred. I also believe that donations would be happily accepted and that would give a, a more wide opportunity for more people to join and then, you know, reduce some of these percentages to kind of have an even playing scale or a a do-over. <laughs> Start fresh, let's say. So I would like to propose to allow union members to choose where they want their monies allocated for their retirement, which would guarantee them a return on their investment. So they could, you know, do their own due diligence and some research and decide where they want their money invested and have some options for them available, which would also be great. Depending on your age and how much money you put into a, a plan, it, it can really vary. So the younger you are when you start putting money into your retirement, the better off you are because the lesser you, you can start putting in. The older you get, the more money that, uh, is required to start putting in for your retirement. So if you're in your twenties and you haven't already done that, I, I highly recommend you start. Since we have, you know, at least speaking in, in Los Angeles, I know you have unions where you're at in many other cities and some great, you know, unions are the Nashville union. I know they've done a lot and New York has a new, uh, union president that's actually a French horn player. So that's pretty, pretty cool. But, uh, to host an open to all non-union members and union members, a mixer to basically educate, answer questions, network, on a, on a monthly, bi-monthly basis, so on a regular basis to really build a community. To establish a price point range for all jobs <laughs> with only three different contracts to choose from. So as opposed to 
the scroll I showed you on the union, uh, local 47 site of all of those different contracts that there were. Imagine if you just had A, B, or C to choose from. And then it would be much less complex, less confusing, easier to negotiate, and it should hopefully and would save everyone's time. I would think that as musicians and artists, even though there's television and film and then there's live music, and then of course there's demo recordings, it could be broken down uh, simple to make it friendlier for, for more people to choose from, I would, I would hope. Uh, and so that's that with basically having a, a low budget, a medium budget, and then for premium jobs. So you're including everything within three different contracts. Another option is you can yourself join the board of musicians, which again, I, I did attempt to do and I may, I may attempt to do it again in the future as I would love to be a part of making a change for the better in our industry. Now, there is one more little proposal that is, I would call Tawny's top secret idea. If you want to know more about that, then you need to contact me directly. If you're someone watching this video who can financially help, I have a wonderful proposal, but again, I cannot do this without you. So on that note, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this. I tried to be brief. I tried to be educational and I tried not to be boring. So if you like this video and you appreciate this content that I'm providing, I so appreciate you subscribing to my channel and for supporting live music, everyone. Happy week to you. Thank you so much again for watching and until next time. <laughs>